Hey guys, welcome to Talks International. ES Lawrence here. Today we'll be having a chat with Jamie Dornan, who will be playing as Parker in his new upcoming film um, on Netflix called Heart of Stone. So let's give it a go. And hi, Jamie. How you doing? Hi, ES. How are you? Good. Nice to meet you. Um, so let's begin. Yeah. Um, well, you've portrayed a wide range of characters throughout your career. I mean, from a serial killer in The Fall to a romantic lead um, in the Fifty Shades series, now as Parker in Heart to Stone. How do you approach the process of immersing yourself in such diverse roles? I just think that's the fun part of it for me, you know, is the, the diversity of it. You know, um, I if I was doing... If every movie I did was like Heart of Stone in terms of the scale and action, I think I'd be bored, you know, is the truth. Um, I love being able to enter a genre like this with, with um, full commitment and, and excitement to, to feel what it's like to be in a movie like this. And I, and I loved it and had an amazing time and that I'd love to do more action stuff, but I wouldn't want it to be every job, you know. Um, there's some guys, particularly a lot of men who seem to only do action films, um, I just would be so dissatisfied, I think. And I love that I've had the options to um, to explore loads of different stuff. I mean, I think the movie I did before this was Belfast, which was like the most like, you know, like calm, relaxed, uh, you know, experience. And then you do something that's so heightened and it's equally fun on it, but it challenges you in a different way. So, you know, you approach them all as as they come and, and, uh, and uh, and they all require their own specific energy, I feel like, and this required a different energy to what I'd uh, given before because it was a different world than what I'd been involved in before. How long does it usually take from one character to another? Or do you adapt really quickly? Uh, yeah, it depends. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit conscious of uh, trying to have a break in between now. Um, I'm incredibly fortunate that I, I have a, a element of choice in my career and uh, I have the luxury of being able to say I might take a bit of time off. Um, I think I, I, about three or four pre-pandemic, maybe four years ago, I did like three jobs back to back to back and um, I remember just after that saying I won't do that again. I, 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 it wasn't healthy, it wasn't uh, uh, and ultimately it's sort of damaging at some point um, to usually the project that's at the end of those three projects because you're just you're a bit worn out and it's tricky when you're balancing you have three kids so i'm balancing family life so now i am much better at being able to go put everything in the job take a bit of time off just be a dad be a husband be around and then and then ease yourself back into another way so I, ideally i think it's about a three or four months off would be uh, would be the perfect time to get yourself in the right headspace to start again yeah. Well, what made you say yes to this one um, and, and made you say you want to be a part of this project? It, it, it had a lot of elements that were exciting to me. You know, it was a genre that I hadn't spent any time in before. It had Gal Gadot, who I think is just like top of her game, in, in, particularly in that, in that realm, and, and someone I'd only heard good things about. Um, I had uh, just worked with Kenneth Branagh, on Belfast and he'd done Death on the Nile with her so you know I was able to hear like great things about her from from Ken and other people who'd worked with her. Uh, um, Tom Harper was a director that I'd admired for a long time I sort of nearly got the chance to work with him on a television thing a long time ago um, 12 years ago something like that. <clears throat> so uh, so there, and so there was a bit of a history there, and uh, and and you know it's Netflix and Skydance who are, you know, sort of monsters in the game really, and uh, there was the and the, I loved the ambition of it, you know, I loved where they were, what they're the story they're trying to tell, and Tom's vision of trying to tell such a big scale movie and story, but but try to keep it grounded and and make the audience care about these people, and all of that bundled into one package just massively appealed to me. Yeah. Well, one last question, and I think this is important. Um, we share something in common, which is the love of golf. Um, what hey. are you currently start struggling with in golf? Are you trying to break 70, 80? Yes, I, um, I, 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 it's, it's alarming how much I think about golf. Um, 
I'm struggling. You know what I'm struggling with? The fact that I have to get on a flight tonight just as, uh, as the final couple of groups tee off at the US Open at LACC. So uh, I'm struggling with the fact that I'm my, my dear friend and compatriot, uh, Roy McElroy, uh, is one shot off the lead and could win the US Open tonight and I'm not going to be able to see it live. I'm really struggling with that. Uh, but in reality, I'm struggling off the tee really badly um, and uh, it's, it's been punishing me. So, um, but I find, I'm sure you agree with golf, the, the, you know, before that it would have been around, like my chipping would be, I'd be duffing a lot of chips and suddenly that, that's actually working out really well, but then something has to break if that's going well and what's broken is off the tee. So, uh, yeah, uh, I feel your pain if you, if you have pain at the moment with golf, it's a constant source of pain. <laughs> Well, I know it's summertime in the UK, but if you consider of escaping winter later um, to Indonesia, I'll be honored to invite you um, for a round of golf. So, yeah, who knows? Thanks, Jamie, for this. All right, man. Good to see you. All the best.